There's two main reasons why you want to avoid travel credit cards with an annual fee, no matter how many times someone like me tells you that this card is definitely worth it. Because you may in fact be better off with one of these no annual fee credit cards, which I'll share with you here soon. Now this first reason may be a bit obvious as far as why you want to avoid a travel card with an annual fee, and that's if you're not planning on travel in the next 18 months. Why 18 months? Well, because if you are traveling in the next 12 to 13 months, you may actually want to start considering getting a credit card with a sign up bonus which includes an annual fee and that's because you're going to find a lot of award flight availability if you plan further out in advance which includes as far as a year out and now if you're not traveling within 18 months you may find yourself paying for more annual fees than you should be because you can't really take advantage of a travel credit card's benefits if you're not traveling now someone could make the argument that you could still get sign up bonuses and stockpile points for once you are ready to travel but i really don't recommend this because kind of like cash points and miles do devalue over time and so I always generally recommend that you use your points as you get them or get those points and kind of hold on to them for a specific plan or trip that you're wanting. And now a danger of this going ahead and collecting sign up bonuses is that let's say you sign up for the Capital One Venture X. It has a great 75,000 point sign up bonus of great Capital One points. It comes with a $395 annual fee, but it's very easy to get that value so long as you're traveling at least once per year. But let's say you get the sign up bonus you go ahead and cancel that card because you're not able to get the benefits from it and then years go by and you want that card again it's actually kind of difficult to get the Capital One Venture X and so you may cut yourself short by getting that card now when you're actually not ready for it reason number two to avoid credit cards with annual fees is because you're broke I mean this suggests and I'm not serious at all but what I really mean is that if you've got other financial priorities that you've got to pay attention to then don't get caught up in the FOMO of this award travel stuff this is gonna be here waiting for you whenever you're ready and now I'm gonna say something that most points and miles creators don't say outright and that's that outside of the sign up bonuses these travel credit cards with annual fees you are kind of after a point prepaying travel for example if you get the IHG premier business card with a hundred and seventy five thousand point bonus affiliate link in the description by the way people will tell you that this is a money maker and that you can easily keep this card year after year because because it has an annual fee of $99, but you get a free night certificate at an IHG hotel, which is typically worth more than the $99 you pay for it. And now all of this is completely true and you are getting more value, but you can also relate that to you're getting a discounted $99 hotel stay every year for that credit card. And so you can really think of these annual fees as kind of contributing to your annual travel budget. Now this is all fine and dandy, but if you've got other financial priorities, then you may not be wanting to to add to that travel budget because now let's say you've got some high interest debt that you're paying off now if you got credit card debt you really shouldn't be considering a travel credit card at all until you get that handled in fact I'm gonna have some resources down in the description for you if you are paying off some debt here some other examples include if you've got something finance like furniture or some big appliance or a large car payment that you're paying off or if you're paying off your student loans going ham like I was back in 2016 2017 trying to get those paid off then I'm gonna go ahead and give you permission to go ahead and forego all of these travel cards with annual fees that we're talking about on YouTube and Instagram and all these different places. Instead, here are some no annual fee credit card options and these will allow you to accumulate valuable reward points so that way you can occasionally redeem them for a free flight or a free hotel or you can let them build up and stockpile them for when you are ready to get into the annual fee travel credit card big sign up bonus options now i know this goes directly against what i said earlier and i'm going to get to that real quick be sure to like this video if it's been helpful so far and if you're wanting more award travel content like this be sure to subscribe my name's michael by the way it's nice to meet you and so if you're currently a renter in terms of housing right now, then this first card may be the singular option that you need. It lets you earn points and miles on your rent, and that's without any transaction fees and of course no annual fee. And this is the only card that lets you do so. It'll send a payment electronically or even mail a check for you in order to pay your rent. And it's actually the latest card that I applied to and received. It is that good. And I'm talking about none other than the Built Rewards card. Again, I've got the link in the description 
description for you. It is a great way to support this channel if you use that link. This card also has decent earning categories. You get three times points on dining, two times points on miscellaneous travel, one times points on everything else. Oh, and you also get five times points on lift rides. Also on the first of every month, they double your earnings in all of these categories on whatever you spend on that day. And they call it rent day to make it more fun. But now the real reason why I recommend this card as a no annual fee card is because of how flexible these points and miles are. You're able to redeem them in a multitude of ways from cash back to the travel portal, but most importantly because of their transfer partners. These are frequent flyer programs and hotel programs that they partner with that you're able to transfer your built points over to these programs and take advantage of the deals on there. And that's why it could be okay to stockpile these built points and also the points I'm going to talk about here soon, but it's because let's say for example you decide to earn American airline miles and you want to stockpile those and they are a great currency to do so however if you're not traveling within the next two years and you're just holding on to those points any moment American Airlines can just change their pricing structure altogether and those miles could be a lot less valuable than what they were currently but with built points you've got that option to transfer to different transfer partners and that gives you a lot more protection to that devaluation risk and you don't even need to partner this card with the annual fee version card in order to take advantage of those benefits and transfer partners. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about in terms like transfer partners and taking advantage of all these different things, be sure to check out the link in the description for Travel Freely. It is my favorite app to introduce to beginners and something I still use because it's a great way to keep track of your different credit cards as well. But be sure to sign up for it for the link down below and it will help you get started. If you don't rent, then this next program is for you. I'm talking about Chase Ultimate Rewards. They have two no annual fee credit cards that I like to recommend, and that's the Chase Freedom Flex and the Chase Freedom Unlimited. I tend to recommend the Flex over the Unlimited simply because the Freedom Flex offers five times points back on quarterly rotating categories, while the Chase Freedom Unlimited offers 1.5 times points back per dollar spent on all expenses. They also earn three points per dollar on dining and drug stores and five points back on travel booked through the Chase Travel Portal. And there are no annual fee cards like I said, but they do offer a small sign-up bonus of $200 after spending $500 within the first few months. And now I highly recommend either of these cards because as you spend, you earn cash back, which is what these cards are. They are technically cash back cards. But later down the road, if you decide to hold on to this cash back and you pair it with a travel credit card like the Chase Sapphire Preferred or the Chase Sapphire Reserve within the Chase Ultimate Rewards ecosystem, you can then transfer that cash back from the Freedom card over to your Chase Sapphire Preferred in a one cent equals one point ratio. And so that $200 sign up bonus then turns into 20,000 points instead that you can use towards travel. And now like Built Rewards, these Chase Ultimate Rewards are very flexible and very valuable. You can cash them out which I don't typically recommend. You can use them on the travel portal for slightly more value than cash back, or you can transfer them to one of Chase Ultimate Rewards' transfer partners, which are also very valuable. Now there are definitely other quality, no annual fee credit cards that could be very useful to a lot of different people. However, these options that I've given you are guaranteed to be useful for just about everyone in most situations, and there's very little downside of getting one of these cards. And now if you're interested in trying to figure out where points and miles can actually take you and how to use them, be sure to check out this playlist that I made for you. Or if you're a little bit more curious about those two freedom cards and you're wondering which of those is better for you, be sure to check out this video I made for you answering just that question. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for hanging out.